Hello YouTube land! Today what I'm going to be showing you is how to create a bucket Minecraft server on Windows for the very first time. If you don't know what to do, guess what? This tutorial will help you out. First and foremost, you want to go over to Google, go to Minecraft. You'll want to go to the official website, which is Minecraft.net. Click on it. You don't even have to log in. All you have to do is just hit download. Now, for the Windows users, all you have to do is just download MinecraftServer.exe. It's right here. For any other operating system that you have and still want to do this tutorial, what you'll have to do is go and click on a separate tutorial right there and go from there. But again, for Windows users, all you have to do is just click on that right there. Do not open it yet. You'll want to show it in folder. It'll go to your download section. The next thing on the list to do is to go to and open up another, you know, my computer file go to your C drive or wherever you want to put this. I'd honestly create this at the root. I created a separate Minecraft folder already. So if you want, you can actually create a Minecraft folder, then chuck it into there. However, what I'm going to do is actually click on a that and just type in server. This is where I'll put it and this is where it'll be. So all you have to do is just move it right over. And there we have this part done. You'll want to double click this, hit run, let it go through it'll look like it's doing something it's fine it's it, it it's fine it's going through it's going through now for those that haven't actually owned a server before or haven't actually heard the horror stories do not hit the close button just fyi i'm trying to help you guys out what you have to do is just type in stop right at the bottom if you hit the close button on that console or on the upcoming bucket console that i'm going to show you how to do there is a small chance, but a good chance, that you might corrupt your chunks. And nobody wants that. That is freaking annoying to try to fix. So I'm trying to help you guys out, and I don't want to see you guys, you know, hurt yourselves or whatever. Okay, next thing on the list to do is to actually get Bucket. Why not? Now, we're at the Bucket.org website, and uh, you want to hit this Get Craft Bucket link right here. Now, before we go through this wiki, in which, by the way, this wiki is important, we will be going back to this in the future because it has the instructions. Uh, what you'll want to do is go onto the sidebar, you'll find Get Bucket. Click on that link, go through. Do not click on the recommended build, do not click on the beta build. The recommended build right now is 1.4.7, and we already have 1.5.1, so why would you click it? This one, although it has 1.5.1, it's a beta build. There's a little bit better of a build out there for you. It's a development version, and usually, in most cases, I love using the development versions because they have so many more bug fixes in them done. All you have to do is just download that and then we'll go to the next step. And by the way, do not accidentally click on the dot jar. You'll probably mess things up like I did. And I had to restart the tutorial. Yep. Go me. Okay, so for those Windows users, again, just uh, show in folder. Actually, I already have, there we go. Show in folder, done and done. What you'll want to do is open up your server folder, drag and drop, rename this little long ass string to just craft bucket. Now, for those that haven't actually done this, I do recommend doing it we're going to have to show some extensions because we don't know exactly what this is. Hit Organize, go to Folders and Search Options, click on View, Show Hidden Files, Folders and Drives first off, and uncheck Hide Extensions for Known File Types. Voila! Now we know that this is a .jar, now we know that this is a .txt, now we know etc etc etc. And we're going to be needing this, so this is a highly recommended step. It really, really is. Anyways, we're going to head back to where we saw in the wiki. Now, so read these instructions. You download it, you put the jar in the directory where you would like the server to run. We just did that. We stuck it in there. Open up a text editor and type in blah, blah, blah. Okay, so what we're going to do is open up a new text document. You'll see new text document.txt. That's fine. We'll call it run for now, right? Right. So let's open it up. Let's stick this in here copy paste. Now there's a couple things that you want to actually note. 
This is the minimum amount of memory you want to allocate to your computer. This is the maximum amount of memory that you want to allocate to your computer. So let's say you have a two gigabyte system and you're running Windows 7, you probably don't even want to do this. If you're just doing this with your friends or whatever, there's only gonna be like three people on, you can set this to 512, you can do the same thing to that one as well. Me, on the other hand, I have you know 16 gigabytes, so I'd be able to allocate a lot more if I wanted to. So we're going to do that, why not? It, it doesn't, it's fine if you're just doing this as a test. So you'll want to then go to file, save, done, done and done. As here it says, save the document as run.bat, not as a TXT. So this is why I actually asked you guys to do this because now you can actually see what's going on. You'll want to then take the .txt format and switch it into a bat. It'll warn you, yes, you want to change the file extension, done and done. Now, if you guys want to edit this again, but you for some reason can't, you can just go back to edit like that, or I do highly recommend you getting a program called Notepad++. It is free, it really, really is. So, whoopsies, hold on, there we go. Sorry, I had other tabs open, I just wanted to kind of fix that. And as you can see, this actually color codes things for you too, so this makes it a lot easier for you to actually continue to do stuff. And not just in the scope of this, but otherwise, anyways. Okay, so we did name it craftbucket.jar, yes? Yes, craftbucket.jar is created. So what do we do? Double click on run.bat. As you can see, it'll go through this. And by the way, if you get this to pop up, just yeah, allow access, that's kind of what has to happen. So we're going through there. So as you can see, this is now in a black console screen and this is important and this is needed. There are some things, like migration of an old and blah, 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 due to the way that Minecraft is implemented. Okay, so what you'll want to do, again, is type in stop, uh, press any key, et cetera, et cetera. What you'll want to do is actually get rid of your worlds. If you haven't actually put anything in them, but if you have, keep them, it's fine. It'll nag at you a little bit, and then it'll try to autocorrect. Anyways, it's going to go through, and it's going to continue going on through. Without worrying about it, it'll actually create the spawn areas again. Done and done. Now, again, I can't stress this enough. Do not hit close. If there are certain operations that are occurring and you hit close, that can kind of ruin things. So I recommend stopping at any cost. Just saying. But let's say you have you know, your world, your nether and all that, but you want to change some things around. Everything is in the server properties, which is right here. So as you can see, I created the server, et cetera, et cetera, generator settings. Let's say you don't want to allow nether. And this is one of the things that I actually recommend because I've seen people that just randomly create nether portals and they keep on creating nether portals and it creates this giant mess. You can still create the nether later on, but you can't allow access between portals and then you can create a global portal system with spawn points. I highly recommend this. I really, really do. So, you know, this can be our, t no, 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 this can be our spawn world. That's what we're going to call it, spawn, for the future purposes of this. Enable query, enable flights, keep those to false. Uh, you can change the default port. Why not? You can if you want. It, it doesn't really matter, but if you want, you know, go right ahead. If you need to, like some hosts actually require you to change it, you can do that. Server IP, all that. You you kind of want to fill that in eventually. I'd keep this at 256 going through, spawning NPCs, yes, you want that. Do you want a whitelist? If you do, this will force people that only have access to this to go through. But for a public server, I'd set it to false. Spawn animals, true. Snooper enabled, true. Hardcore. Hardcore is basically if you die, you lose everything. And that can kind of be a pain in the butt. So, and in some cases you can't log back in for a little bit, depending on the actual thing. So you can have custom server packs. Online mode is true. Now what online mode is, is basically, you know how you have to log into Minecraft to authenticate and it basically says, hey, guess what? You paid for Minecraft, continue going through. Well, that's what online mode true is. If you don't want that and you want multiple clients and multiple, you know, sometimes hacked clients, but sometimes it's just nice and convenient to have multiple people, then you can set that to false. Personally, I prefer true. I paid for my Minecraft quite a few times over and it has given me so many great things that I just continuously support it. So I always set my online mode to true. 
I kind of like to give back to them. Max players, generally speaking, if you are running on somebody else's host, this won't even matter. Although I'd probably set it to something, you know, 20. If you're doing it just with friends, it doesn't really matter. View distance, I'd set maybe down to 5. And again, MOTD, you can put colors in this, but for now we're just going to put test server. So again, for now, we are pretty much done with these settings. And again, we disallowed the nether. So it's fine. The nether is still created, so that doesn't matter. Although actually, we're going to again delete all these worlds and go from there. Is there anything else? Permissions, ops. So let's say you want to give yourself op, and I do stress, I can't stress this enough. Don't give yourself op if you're in a production machine. You'll want to fix your permission files to the point where you're comfortable, but do not give yourself op. That's way too much power. But because we don't have any plugins yet, I will give myself up for now. But I cannot stress this enough. Do not give anyone, including yourself, up once you are in a production environment. And by production environment, I basically mean that when your server's online, don't give people up, including yourself. You'll thank me for this later in case if your server gets attacked or whatever and you, then you can't get griefed or super griefed or destroyed, basically. I've seen so many servers fall based on that criteria alone, that they were just too lenient with that. But overall, we're going to set this up again. It's going to go through. It's going to create the spawn area or the world spawn, which is fine because that's what we're creating. It's just going to create spawn and spawn the end. And again, with the end, I don't even really use the end that much because once it's gone, it's gone. We're actually just going to set up Minecraft right now. We're going to log right in just to show you that this actually does work. I'm using a specific texture pack, so there it is, Sortex Fanver. So yeah, my apologies, this will take a couple seconds. So for this, all that you'd have to do is just type in localhost if you want to join your personal server. Keep in mind that this will only allow you access to this. If you want others to join it, you'll have to figure out your own IP. And if you Google what is my IP, you'll have it then. Anyways, join server. You're logging in. Why not? Here you have it. You are now logged into your own server. It's kind of neat. You don't have any plugins installed, which is true. And uh, here is your server environment. Isn't it great looking? It's really great looking, isn't it? I hope you guys have enjoyed. This has been Kestel Kate, and I've been going over a quick tutorial on how to set up Minecraft Bucket on your own basic, basic server. Why not? There are no plugins, and I definitely recommend getting a whole bunch of plugins. And you know what? I definitely recommend watching the next tutorial, which will be out probably tomorrow. I'm going to be going through these quite a bit. This is going to be my new main tutorial series, so I really hope you guys enjoy. I'll be testing out a bunch of plugins, some that are requested by you guys, some that are important that I want to cover and that I really need to stress to cover. So until next time, you know, leave a comment down below, subscribe to my channel, leave a like on this video, and stay tuned for the next video tomorrow. You guys are awesome. Until next time, have fun.